Veal Common and Howdy. And welcome to the Fog Motor Pool today. We're going to do a very short video here looking at a common hack to try and get round the problems you can have with shielded spark plugs and HT leads. The shielded system was used in the Hotchkiss M201 and it was used here in this Panard AML and it was also used in the Sum lorry, the V8 petrol version. So let's have a look at the leads that we're dealing with, the reason why we might want to change them and I'll show you that hack really quickly. I've just taken one of these armoured spark cables or HT leads off of this distributor over here. Those that do have a Hotchkiss especially are going to be familiar with these and so here we have the top of the distributor and you can see that we have threaded attachments. Also notice there's only four, there's not a fifth for the coil. That's because the coil is actually inside the distributor with these. Based probably on the M38 American Jeep, so very similar. The two parts aren't actually interchangeable, so do be careful. This is the cable, the HT lead. You will recognize these, you've got two ends on them. You've got one here with a knurled nut on the end, quite a short extension inside of that. The other end is quite longer, and this is the end that goes into the distributor. Here's the distributor here, the lead goes in and it screws down, I think it's a 19mm uh, nut on the end of there. So let's take that out. So on the opposing end that goes into the engine, you actually use these. And these again are, one can describe them as armoured, but they're actually suppressed spark plugs. They are available, they're quite expensive to buy, I've seen these ch people charging up to £30-£40 each with these. And these are attached to the end of the HT lead, and then that's use in the top of the Hotchkiss Jeep, as I said, in this Panard, or even in the Sumb petrol lorry. Problem is with this, this whole system now is about 60, nearly 70 years old. Parts of it start to break down, and there are replacements that are, uh, you can buy on the internet, but unfortunately they're not probably up to the same quality as the originals. This is an original, you can actually see on the end there, Here is a replacement that I purchased recently. You can actually see the difference on the way at the electrode. You can see here it's like recessed and been cut in. So this is a post-market one in which they've upgraded it. And here's the original. I'm afraid these don't work very well. So if you do buy them, I'm sure they'll be absolutely fine on the Hotchkiss Jeep. But where I'm using them on this Panhard, they're actually mounted more or less in the bottom of the engine. So they foul very, very easily. So I really want to go back to these. Also, I was noticing on the end, it's quite fragile, the electrode here. This is actually made out of a ceramic that can break and therefore then it earths out inside. Inside the spark plug as well, probably quite difficult to see. You can see that there is a ceramic insert as well. That can also break and then the lead can start earthing itself and therefore not giving you a good enough spark in the engine and creating problems. So I'm going to try and do away with all of this to try and get something that's more reliable, easier and cheaper to run moving forward. In the Hotchkiss Jeep over here, I will show you a picture of the replacement, uh, what I would describe as normalised spark plug. So it's an auto light. There's also an Abosh equivalent, so I'll flash up those details there so you're able to get hold of them yourselves. We do need to, we do need to keep this particular end because we are keeping the distributor, so we're not going to touch that. But what we are going to do here is we're actually going to take this off and we're going to replace it and so we can attach to what I would describe as that normalised spark plug. I'll show you one that I've done here now, and then we'll go through the steps and show you how you can do the same. So here we have, this is the end that goes into the distributor, not made any changes there. Put a bit of wet and dry over the top here to try and get, get rid of any corrosion to make sure there's a good, um, a, a good contact. I've tested this lead uh, by passing electricity through it and making sure that we've got continuity. On the very end, you will see now that I have actually removed the metal casing and I've put this gnarled nut back on and I've replaced it with a normal spark plug attachment. So here's our spark plug. This will attach to the top and it will click on. Okay, and there we go. This 
it's probably very good to start off with, but if your engine's moving around, and especially if you're in an armoured car, we want to have all this covered, because obviously we've got power passing through You can here. actually buy these on the internet, uh, cheaply enough. And these will actually slide over the top here to give us a secure rubber insulated contact. So let's have a closer look at how we turn one of these leads into one of these. And obviously these spark plugs coming in at about £2.50, a much cheaper option than it is to try and buy originals or imitation ones. To effect these changes, to transform our original Army HT lead that is radio suppressed, to change it into our now more modern uh, HT lead. So here we've got a modern clip on the end that's able to hold on to the end of our replacement upgraded spark plug. The tools for the job are quite simple. We're going to need wire cutters to cut through the HT lead. We're going to need an 18 and a 19 spanner. And these are really to undo this end here that will have to be removed. A pair of scissors should we need it. My trusty razor blade. Obviously the spark plug. And these here, which you can buy in strips. And these are actually uh, for attaching to the top of the spark plug. There we go. And this forms an end on your HT lead. Lastly, you may need one of these, and this is a crimping tool, and we're using the terminal element in here. Basically, this goes in, is forced together, oops, go around this way. It's forced together, and it actually crimps around the end of the HT lead. Last but not least, a rubber boot to make sure that it goes over the top of the spark plug so we're not losing any charge anywhere into other parts of the vehicle. And obviously we're just going to cut these through because it makes a lot easier to fit these if once they've actually been cut through. Like so. Watching your fingers, obviously. Okay, and there we go. And this will make it a lot easier to fit over the end here. And the reasoning for that is these are quite tight and they're quite difficult to get onto your new ends. So therefore, because I'm using a right angle, then it's a little bit easier to be able to cut it, put it round with insulation tape, and then we're off and running.
in the panhard here, the engine block's actually made out of aluminium. So therefore, I'm putting a steel spark plug into that aluminium block. The heat differentiation between the two and the two metals being in touch with each other can make taking these spark plugs out a bit of a pain later on. So therefore, we have on the end of this stick a bit of copper grease, and we're just dropping that onto the thread of the plug, which is good practice when you're putting new ones in, so it eases the plug in and will assist in making it easier to take the plug out at a later date. change those spark plugs from those what we would describe as armoured or suppressed ones into a modern equivalent. We're now going to start the pan hard, make sure that it's running nicely and listen out to see if it's firing on all four cylinders. The reason we did this is in our last video it sounded like the engine was misfiring on one of those cylinders and that was manifesting itself as an irregular tick over, it sounded a little bit chunky and also from the exhaust over here, we could smell unburnt fuel coming through. The last test was really to hold the top of that spark plug whilst it was in the engine and it still felt quite cold, so it hadn't even heated up. So it shows you that that cylinder wasn't burning its fuel effectively. So hopefully now we've got these new spark plugs in, brand new ones, we've altered those cables. Let's get it fired up and we'll listen and we'll smell and we'll feel to see if all four cylinders are firing.